Hi everybody, my name is Danielle Nicole and welcome to Monetary Makeup. All right, I am coming at you guys with a brand new release from Wet n Wild. So this is Wet n Wild's new Bare Focus Clarifying Finishing Powder. Now I think we all remember the rave when this little beauty dropped two years ago, which is the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. Now this little beauty, the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator, quickly became many people's favorite tinted moisturizer. Now as someone who's in my mid-30s with oily dehydrated acne prone skin, I also fall into that category. This little Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator is still one of my holy grail tinted moisturizers to date. So of course, as soon as I saw that my local Ulta just dropped this new Bare Focus Clarifying Powder, I knew I had to try it out for you guys right away. Now if you can remember, right after Wet n Wild dropped this Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator, they also came out with this full coverage Mega Last Incognito Concealer. So today I'm going to be revisiting the Tinted Hydrator and the Incognito Concealer in addition to trying out this new Bare Focus Clarifying Powder. And in addition to testing out this new Bare Focus Powder, the topic of the day is going to be pertaining to CDs. And if you are noticing your current CD is earning less than 1%, then perhaps there is another financial option that you may want to consider. So if you're excited to get started and enjoy the video while you're watching, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and let's get started right now. Now the only thing I have on my skin so far is a little bit of eyeshadow and mascara as well as moisturizer. So I am not going to be using a primer today because I really would like to see how this new powder performs on its own. Now I haven't heard too much about this powder since it is a brand new launch. However, on the front and back of the packaging, it says Wet n Wild Bare Focus Clarifying Finishing Powder. Now this little beauty retails for $4.29 at Ulta, and I do believe it's also sold at Walmart. Now I also recently reviewed the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Press Powder, so I am going to be swatching both of these next to each other, that way you can see the depth and undertone of this shade. Now the shade I have in the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Press Powder is Fair One, and in this new Wet n Wild Bare Focus Clarifying Finishing Powder, the shade I have is Fair Light. Now these shades are probably going to be a little bit difficult to pick up on camera, especially because they are fair and blend right into my skin tone, but I'd at least like to try for you guys. So this first swatch right here, this is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Powder in Fair One, and this is the new Wet n Wild Bare Focus Powder in Fair Light. Now because this is not a powder foundation, I do think this shade is going to be a great match for just overall brightening the skin. So this is what my skin is looking like with just moisturizer on it. I do have a breakout right here that I'm going to be covering in a little bit, but this is what the skin is looking like with no makeup on. Now the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator retails for around $5 depending on where you pick it up. Now as I mentioned, this is still one of my favorite Holy Grail Tinted Moisturizer products. Now I also recently reviewed the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation, and if you missed that video, let's just say you might want to check that out as it pertains to this Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. So I will link that right up here for you guys. Alright, so the shade I have in the Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator is Porcelain. So I'm going to squirt out a little bit on the back of my hand here. And I have my damp Chamisse sponge, so let's start blending. So if you still have not tried out this Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator, I highly recommend checking it out. Now I have oily, dehydrated skin. However, I have heard from folks who have dry skin, oily skin, dehydrated skin, and many people just rave about this product. So depending on your skin type, or regardless of your skin type, I should say, I believe it should work for you. Now what's great about this tinted hydrator is even though it claims to be a tinted moisturizer, I do find you can actually build this up and get a true light to medium coverage. Now that was one very light layer on the left half of my skin. So see how great of a job it does at covering redness. Now I've used this tinted moisturizer with a brush, a sponge, my fingers, 
and it just looks great every time. However, my preferred application is a damp sponge. Every time I use this product, I just fall in love with it all over again. I feel like my skin just looks nice and hydrated. It's not too dewy, so it just looks really nice. What do you guys think? Now this little Wet n Wild Mega Last Incognito Concealer, it is another great option, especially an affordable option. Shade I use is Fair Beige. So this is what the shade Fair Beige looks like. Nice, fair, cool undertone. So I'm just going to put a couple little swipes right here. All right, I just put a couple swipes underneath the eyes and on the rest of the skin, just going in with the same sponge I used for the tinted hydrator and start blending. Another thing that's so great about these products is they blend so fast. Now, while I blend in this concealer, I do wanna mention that I do feel like the tinted hydrator, you can get on the light side of a medium build. However, the concealer claims to be full coverage. I don't find that it's really a full coverage concealer. I would say a true medium coverage. I'm going to take just a little bit more of the concealer and put a line right here. This is typically where I do get a little bit or quite a bit of redness and quickly blend this out. I would say the finish of the tinted hydrator is a natural finish. However, the concealer leans also natural, but I feel like it dries down just a little bit more than the tinted hydrator. All right, look how quick and easy that was. I'm telling you what, these two products are still some of my favorites. All right, before we set the rest of the skin with the new powder, next let's go in with bronzer. I have two different shades here. The more cool tone gray shade is Feelin' Shady, and then the more bronzing shade is called Honey Drip. Going in with the e.l.f. Putty Applicator Brush. So first, I'm going to dip into Feelin' Shady and just stipple this on. Now, if you have a fair to light cool undertone and you struggle to find contour shades that are not too warm, don't lean orange and aren't too deep. This feeling shady shade is just perfect. Now for the bronzer shade, which is again honey drip, I love taking my damp sponge and going right into the pot here and just stipple this on with the sponge. And then I just go back in with the brush that I use the shade feeling shady and I just do a little bit of tapping over where I did that concealer just now and the bronzer just to make sure it's all blended together. I do just have to quickly mention, if you're a busy mom, busy woman, a busy person in general, and you are looking for quick, easy products, especially in the morning when you're just trying to get out the door, these two Wet n Wild products, as well as the e.l.f. Putty Bronzers, they blend out very quickly and never give me any issues. All right, I'm going to quickly apply some blush and then we will get into the powder. All right, you guys, I have you zoomed in up close and personal because before we go in next with this new powder, I wanted you to see what my skin is looking like with just the tinted hydrator and incognito concealer. So this is what it's looking like. Every time I use these two products, I just feel like I have a great skin day. All right, so I'm just going to tap out any creasing that I may have, which I feel like this concealer does a pretty good job at self-setting, but just in case. All right, moment of truth, the reason you guys are here. So next, let's dip into this new Bare Focus Powder. So first, I'd like to use my damp sponge, the same sponge I use for the foundation and concealer. So I'm just going to take a tiny bit on the back of my sponge here and if I need to add more, I can always do that. So let's see how this does. Just picking up a little bit more. Wow, this is looking great so far. I'm gonna do the same technique on the other eye because I think it looks really great with a damp sponge. I guess I was expecting it to not look great on my under eyes, and I think that's because the other day when I reviewed this e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation, as well as the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Powder. Neither of them looked amazing under the eyes, so, so far I think it's looking great. All right, I'm going to take my damp sponge on the other side 
and pick up some more. Now I really prefer to use a damp sponge when I apply my setting powder. I just feel like I need that extra moisture as someone who has a little bit of dehydration, starting to get fine lines and all of that. So this is just my preferred method. All right, I just picked up a little bit more for the nose. Now this is definitely a problem area for me because I have oily skin, so of course I get oily throughout the day, but I also have dehydration. So we'll see how this looks on the nose. Wow, I feel like that took away my pores on my nose. Like, holy cow, where did my pores go? I mean, they're there, but it looks so smooth. All right, set the rest of the skin. All right, the skin has been set with this new Bare Focus powder. You guys, I am shocked. So first of all, I am not a big powder person. However, out of all of the powders I have tried, reviewed throughout my entire life, there are only two powders that I consider my holy grails. And the fact that this is looking so smooth this far, I mean, I just think it looks so great. The way it blurred my pores, I mean, I feel like I have porcelain skin right now and I'm just shocked. What do you guys think? I think it looks so good. All right, well, I am shocked at how amazing my skin looks and I don't say that lightly, especially with powders. So next, let's cut into the topic of the day and I will meet you back here at the end of the night for my final thoughts and a wear test. Let's hope this powder does well and holds up throughout the rest of the day. Hi everybody, welcome to the topic of the day. So I'm sure you all have noticed by now that interest rates as well as inflation have been skyrocketing. So what we are going to be talking about today are CDs and potentially an alternative. So about 10, 15 years ago, CDs actually used to be a great way to guarantee a return on investment. And in fact, the rate of return that folks were getting at that time were upwards of 12 to 15%. Now, if you don't follow CDs or the market, a 12 to 15% rate of return on a CD is incredible. But unfortunately, we all know the market can never stay up. It of course goes up and down. So unfortunately, the rate of return on CDs have plummeted. So now you are lucky if you can even get half a percent. So today I just wanted to quickly mention fixed deferred annuities. Now, fixed deferred annuities are not a solution for everyone. However, they do work similarly to CDs. So annuities, fixed deferred annuities that is, they offer a guaranteed rate of return for the length of the contract. So if you're nervous about the market going down and you are looking to invest a portion of your money into an investment where you are guaranteed to not lose any money, perhaps a fixed deferred annuity could be an option. So basically the benefits of a fixed deferred annuity are you have a guaranteed rate of return and they grow tax deferred. Now the downside to fixed deferred annuities is you do not have access to all of those funds. So you typically can withdraw 10% for the length of the contract and many times that rate increases the longer you have that term. So just to give you an example, let's say you were to invest $100,000 into a fixed deferred annuity. And let's say that annuity had a three-year surrender period and a three-year guaranteed rate of return. So that would mean as long as you keep that money in the annuity, you would be guaranteed a 3% rate of return. But for an example, the first three years that you have that contract in place, you would only be able to withdraw 10% of that $100,000 for the three years. Now, after that surrender period is over, then you have full access to those funds. So just in a nutshell, what a fixed deferred annuity allows you to do is to grow your funds tax deferred at a guaranteed rate of return. So you're basically participating in market gains and not the losses. But because you are being guaranteed a rate of return, no company is going to give you say a 30% guaranteed rate of return. That's just too high and they would go out of business. Now CDs are a little bit different. However, they are similar in the sense that you do get a guaranteed rate of return back. But one of the main differences with CDs is that regardless of whether you withdraw funds or not, or leave them in the account, you still have to file a 1099 and pay taxes. 
So if you are considering a CD and you are noticing the rate of return is less than a percent, less than half a percent in some cases, then perhaps a fixed deferred annuity may be an option you wanna consider. Now, please keep in mind, everyone's situation is unique, our goals are different, so always talk to your own financial advisor or your own tax advisor before making any decisions. Now, if you are considering a fixed deferred annuity, then I highly recommend looking into different companies, not just one. And that's because all of these investment or insurance companies, they offer different rate of returns in addition to different surrender periods. So if you are able to get a higher rate of return and you do not need access to those funds for the length of the surrender period, then perhaps a fixed deferred annuity may be an option you want to consider. All right, well, I do hope learning about another option for a CD was helpful for you guys. As always, if you have any questions, don't forget to comment monetary makeup down below and let me know. All right, I will meet you guys back here at the end of the night for my final thoughts and aware test. Hi everybody, I just got home from work and my makeup has been on now for over 10 hours. So let me get you guys zoomed in so you can see what my skin is looking like before I give you my final thoughts. All right, so here's what the skin is looking like. So the first thing I have to point out is I'm not a fan of the under eyes with this powder. If you look really close, I definitely have quite a bit of creasing. Now, some of my eyeshadow right here is kind of covering it up, but if you look really close, can you see like right there and right here how it's creasing really bad? So yeah, as far as using this Wet n Wild Bare Focus Powder for under the eyes to set, not a fan. However, oh my gosh, you guys, I am shocked at how great my skin looks after 10 hours. So I do feel like I've gotten a little bit oily, but I'm definitely not excessively oily. If anything, I feel like I just have a nice healthy dew to the skin. Now, the one thing that really stands out to me for this powder is the way it minimizes the appearance of my pores and blurs the skin. So I have pretty large pores in my T-zone and especially on my nose, I cannot see my pores. <laughs> I'm just, I'm laughing because I am so blown away at my nose, especially. Just the way this blurred my skin, it just looks incredible. So I already mentioned that this Tinted Hydrator from Wet n Wild, it's still one of my holy grail products, so I absolutely love it. However, when combined with this new Bare Focus Powder, man, it is just stunning. Now, as someone who has a lot of skin concerns, oily, dehydrated, acne-prone, fine lines, I am just blown away at how great my skin looks, especially in combination with these products. I just cannot believe this $5 powder looks this good. All right, so now I have to hear from you guys. I'm just dying to know. First off, what do you think my skin looks like? Are you seeing what I am seeing as far as the pores being blurred and just the skin overall looking so fresh but not excessively oily? And I'm dying to know, have you guys picked up this powder? And if you have, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm really curious if other people are going to be experiencing the same results that I did. So this is going to be very short and sweet. Holy cow, I am so blown away by this powder. I am so happy I picked it up and I can't wait to use it again. All right, you guys, well, I do hope the topic of the day as well as the review and wear test was helpful for you guys. I just want to thank you all so much for watching another one of my videos, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye, guys.